Well, why don't we uh, keep talking about um, basically applying Greek? So, you know, someone's interested in taking this course, they're going to have to put some time into it. What what are some ways uh, down the road that um, this that the study of Greek would bear fruit in in Bible study or in other uses? Oh well, <laughs> uh, I'm going to personalize this question. So, right. why do how does it bear fruit in my life? Why do I keep uh, why am I so excited about it and keep the mm-hmm. the passion going? Because I have all these translations. I'm not a Greek teacher anymore. Uh, uh, you know, I, I help other professors create their courses. Like, this is the one time where I, I get to come uh-huh. back and be a teacher, so I was happy to do that, but it's, it's not my daily routine. So what keeps me in the Greek New Testament? Uh, it's, it's actually uh, the, the meditative aspect of mm-hmm. it. It slows me down a little bit, and I, I never come away empty. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and that's, that'd be true even reading my English Bible. Uh, mm-hmm. You never come away mm. from the word empty uh, yeah. without, uh, w- without insight, without uh, uh, encouragement, mm-hmm. um, or um, even uh, new motivation to sure. uh, bless others. So I have, anytime I go to the Greek, it, I see something new. Even books like First John that I've taught through, I don't know how many times I've taught through First mm. John. I, I never tire of going back to it. Mm. I always find something new. Um, an example, uh, um, uh, in the Lord's Prayer, that's very common, mm-hmm. there are some words that we don't have a one-for-one English equivalent for. I mean, just languages don't sure. work like that. Uh, and so you might notice when you're asked to recite the Lord's Prayer together, uh, everyone kind of looks at one point. Uh, should I say debtor or uh, transgressors yeah. or debts or transgressions? Sure. Which what, what are we going to do? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's the, because that's one of these places where we don't have a one for one. Uh-huh. So ophilemata, that's the Greek word mm-hmm. for that we have to decide is it debts or transgressions. Sure. In Greek, it, it probably maps closer to the debts mm-hmm. side of things. It could mean financial, but in this case, it's really that moral obligation, sure. the ethical obligation mm-hmm. that we have to one another. And so if we wanted to translate this and really bring out the, the meaning of it, it would be mm-hmm. forgive us of our sins of omission mm-hmm. or what things that we should have done for others that we didn't, didn't that we're obligated yeah. to one another. In mm-hmm. fact, the, as, as Christians, we're obligated to die for one another mm-hmm. uh, as Christ died for us, yeah. to sacrifice for it. So at the base of Christianity, uh, we have this, this obligation sure. and that, we, that we need Christ's grace mm-hmm. for yeah. uh, because uh, we are always trying to mm. be better at yeah. that yeah. Uh, and we trust in his sacrifice for us. Right. So here I am meditating yeah. on uh, a word that we just gloss over gloss so quickly yeah. and recite so quickly because mm-hmm. the Greek has slowed me down yeah. and, and now I'm, yeah. I'm being blessed by the study. I like that. It slows you down. It, if I can supply a metaphor, it's almost the difference between taking a picture of a sunset and just stopping and actually looking at it for a while. Reading, Greek, reading the Bible in Greek is like staring into it as a sunset.